So most of us know how invaluable it can be to have a tripod just for getting the right framing and being confident that that framing is going to stay, especially if you have to grab a few frames. But anytime you're shooting away from home or away from your studio, there's always that trade off of, is it worth being able to have more steady of a shot, more consistent framing, versus having to lug a tripod around. And sometimes you don't even know if there's going to be a shot worth using a tripod on. So that's where something like a lightweight travel tripod comes in. And today we're looking at a lightweight option for a travel tripod from KNF. So let's get into it. We to change the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the sky. We to change the game. We out here taking So like I was saying, this tripod is extremely lightweight. It's made of carbon fiber for the most part. And that's a huge deal for me. I have over the last few years, especially in the last year, really been trying to pare down the amount of gear that I have with me in my camera bag, on my back, or even just carrying around a lot. And one thing is that I have for a long time almost never been leaving the house and having a tripod with me. That's changed a little bit now that I've got this because this tripod is so light and so small. And the big thing for me is that I try to keep a relatively small camera bag. That doesn't allow me to have a more full size tripod in the tripod mount of that camera bag. But with this smaller tripod, it's really easy to throw on there. It doesn't take a lot of space. It's not like obnoxiously sticking out from the bag. And at the same time, it doesn't add a lot of weight to my camera bag. So for that reason, I am much more likely to take the tripod with me. Now, I will also say that I don't just take a tripod with me, even this small travel tripod on a daily basis. But if I feel like there's a good chance that I'm going to be shooting something or going to be somewhere where I might want to get a cool shot of something, I'm much more likely to throw this onto my bag or just take it in its carrying case and have it in the car or somewhere more accessible to me than leaving it at home. Now, anytime you're designing something like a travel tripod, there's going to be compromises that have to be made. Do you want to put heavier, but maybe more durable components that are going to, again, take the weight up, but also potentially last longer or be stronger versus do you want to do something that's going to keep the weight down but might not be as strong or as sturdy. So for instance, with this tripod, the last extension of the legs are pretty flimsy and I would not go fully leg extended with a heavier camera setup. Now, having said that, for most height uses, until you're getting up to like the last few inches of the tripod's height, which I believe is 60 inches at its full extension, up until that point and not using those leg extensions, I feel very comfortable with my mirrorless camera. I'm typically shooting with my Canon R6 and even with my 100 millimeter macro f2.8 RF mount lens on there, which is a decent amount of weight in a camera setup. And I haven't had any issues where I felt like the tripod isn't going to be able to safely hold that weight when I need it to. Now, again, the entire tripod is very lightweight. So anytime that you're using this, you are going to have to have a sandbag or your camera bag, something anchoring it down so that you can actually get a steady shot. And if you're somewhere like out where there's a whole lot of wind happening, there is a possibility that it's just going to be too shaky and you're not going to be able to get a super steady shot. Again, that's a compromise of do you want a heavier tripod that's going to stand up more to wind and movement and shaking, that kind of thing? Or do you want something lighter that you can take with you? For me, in my use case of wanting a travel tripod, I want the lighter side. I have heavier tripods for when I need something that has to be more steady, this is a use case for when I need something light. So I will say it's not going to be probably your do everything tripod, but it is again, a lightweight tripod that helps you get out there, 
also having a tripod option that's not going to weigh you down. This tripod does have a ball head mount and anytime I see a tripod that comes with its own ball head mount, it gives me a moment of pause of how good is this going to work. I think a lot of us probably, one of the first tripod type purchases that we made was a Joby like Gorillapod type thing. And the ball heads on those are pretty terrible after like the first month of using it. And I've also even had a lot of other tripods where after months of use, the ball head became less and less usable. Now I've actually been using this tripod for several months and even in all that time, I still feel very confident in the ball head. Again, even using relatively heavy mirrorless, full frame mirrorless camera setups on there, I've not had any issues or anything that has given me pause to say this tripod ball head might not continue to be useful after several months. So I am actually, especially again, considering weight, cost, and size, pretty impressed with how well the ball head works on this tripod pod for the price point that it's coming in at. Moving along with features on the tripod, one little quirk is how the legs lock into place. A lot of times with tripods, when you pull the legs down, the lock is going to automatically engage and you only need to push it to disengage the lock to be able to fold the legs back out. With this, you have to push the lock in or out regardless of what you're doing. So when you're folding the legs down into place to be set up as a tripod to put your camera on, you have to push the locks in so that they engage. And when you're wanting to fold it back up to put it back in a carrying case or travel with it, you have to push the locks out again to disengage. Now, for me, that's a very simple thing to do and it's not, it's not difficult at all, but it is something to be aware of don't just push the legs down and expect the lock to engage automatically and be able to put your camera on and be safe like that. It is something that you have to be aware of. And if you're used to using other tripods that do, again, typically automatically engage the locks, it's another step that is a very important step in keeping your camera safe that you need to actively think about and relearn when you're using this tripod. Going down, on the legs, the locks for extending the legs and, and locking them into place, are the circular kind of twist locks, which I like from an ergonomic and usability standpoint. It also, again, is one of those things that keeps down on the weight and the form factor, the size of this. I will say there is a lot of plastic used in the lock. Again, I've been using this tripod for several months and have not noticed any type of wear or tear or on those or anything that makes me think there will be an issue with these. However, when there is that much plastic in something that you're actively putting that much friction into on a regular basis, there is always the chance that that's going to start to wear or break at some point. So something to be aware of at this price point, and again, for what we're going for with size and weight, I think it's a fair compromise, especially given that over the last several months, it hasn't shown any signs of breaking or even being less effective. And then as we get to the bottom of the tripod, another little quirk or maybe not even quirk, but just something to keep in mind is the actual feet on these tripods. There is no spike or anything that's going to hold it in place and make it more steady if you're uh, in dirt or something like that. It is only the plastic tip feet and there's nothing to switch it out with or anything like that. So not a big deal, again, for my use case, which I think is kind of the story of this tripod. If you're just wanting something really light that's not gonna take up a lot of space to give you the option of having a tripod when you would typically not have taken a tripod at all, I think this is a really cool option because it's lightweight, it's small, and at the end of the day, it's a tripod versus not having a tripod. But again, if you're looking for something ultra rugged, something that's going to be able to handle any use case that you might need a tripod for, something that's going to stand up to all the elements and something that's going to be heavy and sturdy, regardless of how you're mounting it, where you're mounting it, and you're not gonna to have to worry about is this going to be a safe place to, to mount this tripod, this probably isn't the best bet and you might want to invest in something more expensive, which I think if you're only going to have one tripod to do everything, you probably need to invest a lot of money into that tripod anyway. 
this as a just travel tripod for, again, having a tripod versus not having a tripod, I think is worth the money. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you've used this tripod or something like this before, how'd you feel about it? Are you interested in something like this? And does this tripod check off what you're looking for for that? If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button so that you can keep up with everything that I'm doing on this channel. If you liked the video, give it a like. Thanks, see ya. We're about to change the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices.